Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Realm of Ori. In this video, we will continue with Volume 12, Chapter 4 The Empire Strikes First, Part 3. And before we start, this video contains spoilers from the anime and manga series. And by the way guys, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon to get notifications for upcoming videos. So without further ado, let's get into the video. In the Empire, the word, Marshall, was synonymous with the strongest. Only a handful of her associates knew who she really was. Her name remained unknown to the public, and it was said that she always stayed by the Emperor's side to protect him. As they prostrated themselves all at once, a voice rang out from above. What is it with Veldora? He interrupted our last great expedition, but did it shake the Empire? No ma'am. Of course, for this Empire carries the blessing of His Great Majesty. Yes ma'am. An atmosphere, which while not overpowering, was something no one could defy, dominated the room. Yuki, was it? You've been in the Empire less than a year, but your achievements are impressive. However, you are cowardly. Too cowardly. Do you know why the Empire has not made a move since Veldora's resurrection? It's because we were not ready, wrong. It's because of the foolish ones who are trapped by their fear of the past, giving all sorts of reasons just to escape. Isn't that right, Gadra? Yes ma'am. But what's the matter with her? Why is she so impatient now? Gadra was one of the few people that knew the marshal's true face. That's why he felt that the marshal, who had always remained aloof, was somewhat impatient. Don't you think it is highly unlikely that negotiating with Dwarf King Gazel would go smoothly? I don't think you do not understand that, so why are you insisting? Or were you more stupid than I thought? Perhaps, don't tell me you are trying to impede the Empire's supremacy? Has she caught on to me? It's, incredible. Ignoring Gadra, the Marshal turned her attention to Calgurio. So, Calgurio, do you think you can win, don't you? Yes ma'am. That is most assured, your excellency. Right. Then tell me your plan. Calgurio devised a strategy against Veldora as follows. Fast-moving soldiers would lure out Veldora and pin him down by activating the magic cancelers placed in the forest. As a follow-up, the airships would then focus the rays of their magic cancelers on Veldora to immobilize him completely. And then, for the finishing blow, volley fire from the magic guns mounted on 2,000 magic tanks. With this, surely, even that ancient, evil dragon would meet its demise. Let's say it did survive. No matter how strong these true dragons are, there is no way it could make it out unscathed. That's why we will deploy the tank division and then lure the evil dragon there. I was so focused on strengthening our military power that I neglected to investigate the location. That's where I messed up. How incompetent. It appears you have gravely misunderstood. What are you going to do after destroying Veldora? Why do you presume that the Empire did nothing even though Veldora was sealed all this time? That's because our preparations weren't. Wrong, you foolish one. It was because we are waiting for that child, Veldora, to be revived to properly settle it with him once and for all. And then make his imperial majesty's might known far and wide. To that end, what were you planning to do once we had destroyed Veldora? Only by defeating and controlling him will the empire's victory be sealed. Her words resounded in the quiet conference hall. This is crazy, is she serious about that? Didn't I make it clear that mental control isn't going to work? Yet, upon feeling it, an inexplicable fear washed over Gadra. Right, now that I think about it, it sure is strange. Who is the marshal? I have met her, and yet I never found it suspicious that I do not know her name. Gadra opened his eyes and gazed intently at the bamboo blind. A delicate silhouette appeared to be visible, a shape beyond the most eldritch of horrors imaginable to Gadra. Caught up in the illusion, that one of the true dragons had manifested in human form, he hurriedly brushed aside the idea. Everyone swallowed nervously, the tension in the conference hall was palpable. Well then, I'd like to propose a plan. The voice of a young boy echoed in the silent hall. Do tell. I believe that now isn't the time for quarrels, and each corps should set aside their differences. Please allow me to speak openly. Commencing the invasion, the armored corps would enter the territory of the great Jura forest from the east. Demon Lord Rimuru's troops were currently gathering near the intersection between the Great Jura Forest and the Great Ameld River. The marching route of the Imperial Army passed between the Kainat Mountains and the Great Jura Forest. There was no road in the eastern part of the Great Jura Forest, rendering that route far too slow. If they advanced to the main entrance of the Dwarven Kingdom and then headed south along the Great Ameld River, they would reach this inn town. That was where the real battle would begin, were it not for one problem. Wait a minute. Yuki Dono. If we don't cross the forest, we will run the risk of provoking Dwargon. 
I heard that King Gazel and Demon Lord Rimuru are on good terms, and the two countries are allies. If we followed your plan, then don't you think we would be recklessly wedging ourselves in between two fronts? Don't worry, Calgary Odono. We aren't aiming for the in town, but the Dwarven Kingdom. If we cannot negotiate with King Gazel, then we can't call his nation a friendly one, wouldn't you agree? Hostile kingdoms have no need to exist, isn't that right? What? Following that, the conference hall exploded into chaos. Are you proposing we attack the armed nation of Dwargon? While yes, we could win, we cannot fathom the scale of destruction involved. If we do that, we won't have enough remaining strength to attack the west. As we all know, that nation is protected by a natural fortress. You're right. That nation is like a fortress. Because it specializes in defense, it is said to be impregnable. But you see, we have tanks, don't we? Dwargon's specialized magic defense is what earned them their prominence. If we were to get rid of that, we could cut through them like a hot knife through butter. I see, that plan may be more interesting than I thought. Right? If the Dwarven Kingdom were met with a crisis, then Demon Lord Rimuru would have no choice but to act. If we take the initiative and prepare the battlefield in a way that allows us to intercept them, then, it means our army will be guaranteed the upper hand. That's a good plan. I presume that only a vanguard force is stationed in the in town, but either way, they will have the edge as long as we fight in Jura's forests, which will come at a great cost to our side. However, if we launch a full assault on the Dwarven Kingdom first, its natural fortress will provide us with defense, instead. While I don't think that is going to work out smoothly, there's something I need to ask. At the very least, it is more exhilarating to set a trap and wait for the mouse, killing it in one go, than to chase it in the dense forest. After that, we could take aim at the capital of Tempest with impunity. Before that, I still have something to say about my plan. As everyone knows, my mixed core is better at individual combat than group battles. And I think that's why we are better suited to carry out the investigation of the labyrinth. As I mentioned earlier, there is a rumor that Veldora is guarding the 100th floor. In order to confirm this, too, we require an investigation, correct? And there we go. He didn't expect Yuki to abandon his goal, so he could see this coming a mile away. That's unnecessary. If you ignore the in town and head for the capital of that monster country, you will be caught in the crossfire from both sides. It would be better, then, to send my army westward and head towards the dungeon on an unpaved road. In the first place, I'd have to see it with my own eyes to believe that a city can disappear. Tactically speaking, it would be correct to assume that the main force of Demon Lord Rimuru is on the ready. Kakuku, you're still green behind the ears. Don't flatter yourself by thinking everything will go your way, kid. Calgurio was filled with delight. Finally, you're acting like a decent military council. Well then, you seem confident, Calgurio, so I'm going to leave the matter concerning Demon Lord Rimuru to you. This alone is not enough. If we're to attack Dwargon, we'd better put pressure on them from Eastern. I'll leave that up to the mixed core. Together with the task of defending our capital, you, the commander of the core, will be responsible for its formation. Understood. Please wait. Does this mean my magic beast core will not participate in this war? I promise that my core will be useful, so please consider, don't panic, foolish one. I have already planned for your time in the limelight. Really? So, what is my role going to be? You are to lead the entire magic beast core to the north. To the north? Are you saying we cross the Canaan Mountains? Gladium was hesitant to point this out, but then he heard the marshal laugh. That's right, Gladium. Attack the royal capital of Ingratia by sea. The kingdom of Farmanas, which is in the process of reconstruction, can be destroyed at any time once we take Dwargon. What? The sea? But I don't think our nation has naval battleships capable of large-scale transportation. We have them. Right, Calgario? As the marshal said, the latest weapon developed by my army is called an airship. With the support of the Air Assault Division, which uses this state-of-the-art weapon, transporting the Magic Beast Corps is feasible. However, as they are a necessary trump card to fight the Storm Dragon, we can only provide assistance in the form of transportation. Would that be all right? That's great. If you can transport us to the battlefield in one piece, let's go with that plan. We will win. We will definitely win. Victory belongs to us, the Empire. Long live the Emperor. Going by sea, you can give the dragons a wide berth. Rest easy and leave it to me. Is there anything you do not understand? No ma'am. I will, in consultation with Gladium Dono, draw up a strategy that will accomplish our task. Once you drop us off, we will show our enemies just how pitiful they are. Well then, I shall have to make a show of force against the Dwarven Kingdom. Once the war engulfs Central, there will be no further movement in Eastern, 
Do you mean to imply that we can rule out retaliations from bloodthirsty dwarves? I already know. Everyone else in the room, including the other corps commanders, stared at Yuki in disbelief. Is he dense or plain stupid? Very well. Now then, begin preparations at once. Yes ma'am. The order had been given. Without the emperor, Rudra, saying even a word, the stage was set for the empire's simultaneous three-front invasion. On that day, the imperial edict to start the war was issued in the name of the emperor. Spirits were running high in the empire. At long last, after centuries of slumber, the behemoth was raring to show its claws once more.